cranked space. out the specs, <laughs> couldn't leave this lovely board like untouched. It'd just be a crime. So um, yeah, welcome everybody. Um, I'm here just to, I suppose, give you a bit of background, a bit of a run through on the machine. Um, this project started about three and a half years ago, and it's what Brett will call um, a blue sky project where no limits. It was like, okay, we want to design uh, you know, a great domestic espresso machine. Uh, don't worry about any technical limitations. Don't be limited by what's in the market. Just go ahead and research, do, um, do your feasibility, and, uh, and, and bring a project to us that will uh, be the cutting edge of domestic espresso. So um, what we normally do in a project is make a, make a great espresso the best on the market. You go to the domestic market and you find the best espresso machines there, take them apart, see what technology they're using, and then uh, go back and engineer those a little better. Um, we didn't take that tack when this project started. It was more about how can we bring really cafe quality experience to your house and make it a reality, not just a claim. So the only way you could do that was by, by providing superior taste. The only way you can get that really is by using commercial technology. You can't use uh, domestic technology, which pretty much you guys may or may not know, this is what drives 99% of domestic machines on the market. It's a, it's a thermal block, which is basically just, um, just a heated block of aluminium with an element embedded in it and a tortured path cap into the centre of it that, uh, that heats it up as water flows through it. Got a lot of problems with, uh, with taste using a thermal block because the only thing that's uh, governing temperature is the flow of espresso. It flows too fast, espresso, the water that's delivered to ground coffee is too cold. So you end up with those sour notes um, in the coffee. Uh, if water's flowing too slowly because it's been packed too tight, ground too finely, then you get water that's flowing too slowly. So you end up with water that's way too hot being delivered to ground coffee. So you end up with those, those bitter ashy notes in, uh, in the cup. So the other thing you ask this thing to do is you ask it to hang around at like 94, 95 degrees to make espresso, flick a lever or turn a dial and then you want it to heat up to about 165 so you can make steam detection real. Pretty difficult to do with a small little dumb, you know, uncomplicated, you know, limited technology piece of aluminium. So what the guys did was um, they did what's here and they actually separated the heat systems the same way as you would um, in a commercial um, machine, so it's got a dedicated boiler, not a block. It's actually um, it's a 450 mil boiler that's um, that's full of water sitting at around about um, about 95 degrees um, in the tank, and then you've got uh, a separate uh, boiler for steam, which is uh, which is around 950 mils um, in capacity. So by separating those heat systems, you can get great control. Uh, and precision over the most critical element, and that's the water that's been delivered to uh, to the ground coffee. So, the guys understanding that um, that requirement, I suppose, to for precision in water control, really thought about the thermal dynamics of this small boiler, about how we can control that, how we can get consistent water temperature. So, again, they took their lead from the commercial the commercial world, and they actually put a, a small heat exchanger through the top part of the steam boiler. So, instead of dumping um, cold water straight into your, uh, into your espresso boiler, so you draw off a double shot of espresso, you've only got a 12 ounce boiler and you're pulling off you know, two to three ounces of water, that's going to be a big thermal shock. So what the guys did was uh, just what Seneso do, they, um, they use a small preheating tube that runs through a steam boiler and they use that thermal uh, inertia that's there and available to preheat the water that drops um, drops in the espresso tank. So you don't get this big drop in temperatures, you just get this small blip as you pull the shot. So it's really consistent, really stable. The other thing they did to, um, to stabilise the temperature even further was uh, there's a, an actual uh, small 100 watt element that's embedded uh, in the group head itself. So on any of these machines, if you, if you just put your fingers on the side of the, uh, of the group collar, you'll find that they're like really hot. So that's that 100 watt element just making sure that that whole system is really <coughs> firmly stable. That system there, the, um, the small 100 watt element and the, uh, and the 600 watt element in the boiler are both PID controlled. So um, again, you know, it's, uh, it's state of the art technology, so you get consistent control over that, uh, that temperature. 
the other thing that FUID gives you is it gives you the ability to adjust temperature as well. So through the LCD panel, very simple, just three, three presses of one button takes you to the temperature adjustment side of things. All you need to do is just select the temperature that you want, uh, anything from uh, 190 uh, up to 210, I think. So we call that 86 to 96 <laughs> in the real world. <laughs> <Bang>. <laughs> Yeah, so if, um, you know, like out of, right out of the box it comes adjusted at 200. Uh, so we've sort of taken that as being, you know, the out of the box range that most people will get a 95% result out of. But, you know, the, the goodie or highly engaged coffee consumer, <laughs> shall we say, you know, has the ability to, um, you know, they've read, they've read, you know, 50 threads on a coffee gear, you know, about, you know, this bean loves this temperature and for this. This, you know, this blend from this rose to love this temperature, so before they've got their, you know, their bag of coffee from Blue Bottle and it says it should be you know, 201.5, so we can, we can give them the 201, we just can't give them the <laughs> So, yeah, so it gives them, uh, gives them that level of control. 